will call the meeting to order. We do have a quorum at 6.31. Um, first item up, are there any additions or modifications to the agenda? Nope. Okay. Duncan, I see you found the mute button. I, I, can you hear me? I can. Okay. Everyone can't, but I can. So we'll try to repeat what you say if need be. Okay, so no additional agenda items. Let's go ahead and review invoices. Um, first up, Allegiance Trucks um, for outside repairs and parts, a total of $1,319.23. Um, Associated General Contractors, the MSHA May 17th professional training for $300. Brasso Fuels, the diesel tank, a total of $2,623.82, of which $564.53 is due from the village. City Cards, um, there's a lot here from City Cards and it looks like it applies to multiple committees. So I'm just gonna run, them, run down through them. Programs. $860.60, programs is usually a library. Uh, Rosemary is nodding in agreement. <laughs> all the library, okay, perfect. So these are all library charges. I'm just gonna run down through them. Um, $660.60, $17.68, $60.89, $21.39, um, $33.50, uh, $1,275.48, that's for ARPA grant expense, and that's the library charges on the credit card. Um, professional training, $270.25, Tuesday Night Live expense, uh, $56.95, tree board expense, $1,519.15. Do you know what that is? Um, for the property of the grant. So, about, about so it's a month. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So, there, so just to repeat that so folks online can hear, um, that's for the Arboretum, um, they got grant money in, and this is part of their expenses for that grant money. Um, next up on the credit card is postage at $23.20, office supplies at $14.99, basketball at $115.84, baseball at $115.84, ski club at $115.84, gymnastic and dance, same amount, one fifteen eighty four, futsal one fifteen eighty three, and soccer one fifteen eighty one. Lisa just walked yeah, away. That is a website charge for Sports Connect. Okay. So to repeat that, that's a website charge for Sports Connect, which is a sports engine app, and it's divided across those programs. And that's a total credit card payment of $4,849.08. Um, next up, Compass Minerals of America, uh, Highway Course Winter Salt, a total of uh, three invoices for a total of $12,439.37. Country Home Center, Plywood Spruce Miscellaneous, um, $995.28. And rebar strapping for $78.68. Do we know for a total of $1,073.96? And that is band stand expense that, does that go to TANL? To Sanal? Okay. Okay. Uh, Elias Gillen for Historical Society expense, $300. And that was work that Elias did, I assume? Yes, he did a video for the Historical Society. And that, okay, and Rosemary says that's for video work from the Historical Society. Uh, Gorman Group for Summer Calcium Dust Control, $4,410. For some reason, I could not say that number. 
Um, Great Big Graphics Welcome Center Trailhead Building, $852.84. Um, Ingram, that's libraries also, $222.60. Recording in progress. <laughs> Uh, I'm on. Let me do this. Okay, um, thank you. Okay, Ingram programs, $222.66. Um, also, there are library services for a total of $374.35 with a grand total for Ingram of $597.01. I, uh, Ironwood Precision install at the library for maintenance repair, $100.16. Johnson Hardware and Rental Culvert, uh, $5,277.04. Diane LaHoulier Beautification Grant, $100. Lamoille, Lamoille North Modified Union School District Payment, $720,000, sorry, $456.58. Uh, Momar for outside repairs and parts, hardware and outside repairs and parts, a total of $536.59. New England auto glass installation for outside repairs and parts, $325. Pete's equipment and sales for front glass, um, $689.86. Priority Express interlibrary loan postage, $85.16, RL uh, Valley, $53.83. Uh, TD Bank, credit card payment for miscellaneous expense, baseball, adult fitness, basketball, facilities maintenance, and uh, toddler playground, $1,099.38. I assume those are all rec? Yes. Okay. Um, Village of Johnson. Um, do from, I assume, Rosemary, in this case? Do two. Okay, we owe them. Eye insurance deduction, retirement insurances, car charging station, postage, office supplies, water sewage, um, building maintenance, water sewer, holiday sick, sick vacation, office admin, salary, Social Security, and insurances, a total of $11,625.61. Vermont State Treasurer um, for January to April dog licensing, um, $1,550. And that does it. Hey, Mark. You're hmm? muted, Mark. Yep, that's okay. Um, is there a reason we're not? I guess we're hearing them the same. Never mind. Okay. Um, review and approve minutes from last meeting. This is June 6th and 8th. Anyone like to make a motion to approve June 6th? June 6th and 8th. As presented. As presented. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I can't hear you, Mark. Speak up. I think Mark's on mute. Mark's he is not muted on the Zoom. We just aren't hearing him. Where he lives, he's on a Dixie cup at the end of a string. Uh, I, I, I would, can we get a thumbs up and a thumbs down? I would offer just one comment on the uh, regular minutes. Um, it's uh, Ron, R-O-N, Rajensky, not Rod. Oh, oh, 
okay. I guess the rod is from his last name, so I was going to go with it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, if, if we're hearing Duncan, though, there's, we if, should be hearing Mark. And we get a few to the volume up a little bit. Yeah, um, I but, okay. Okay. Um, Mark, if we can't hear you, I don't know that we can use Zoom as a method to get your vote. Um, thank you, Grima, enough access TV. Duncan. Yes. How would you like to vote? Aye. Okay. Evan? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Okay. Next up, any issues or concerns? Um, where'd you go? I just would like to publicly acknowledge Rosemary's getting the recognition of Lifetime, Lifetime Achievement, Achievement Award, Award, the Jim Myron Award. <laughs> yep. Um, Any luck hearing me now? Yes, yeah. now we can hear you. Great. Yep, good news. Yes, so we do want to publicly thank Rosemary for her Lifetime Achievement Award, which is well-deserved. Sure. Maybe she heard us down the stairs. Um, I also just like to recognize that today is Juneteenth, a national holiday that was voted in last year. So I'm sure we'll hear some interesting and good reports. Um, the other thing I would like to just mention that I found earlier this afternoon is that there was a spot on um, Channel 5 WPTC about Johnson, the town of Johnson, which was very nice, very nicely done. Surprised to hear about it, but it was really nice. I watched that too. That was really Jasmine good. Jasmine Uris did a great job with that. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yep. Okay. Can I offer one thing too, Beth? Yes, please. Um, so Eric, Eric acknowledged um, Rosemary's well-deserved Lifetime Achievement Award. Um, Johnson also did very well on that, on the Myron Awards uh, with regard to the uh, Ted Alexander Welcome Center, um, that was for design uh, services. Uh, so that was also well-deserved. And I'm just gonna make a pitch for um, the Historical Society in the Elias Gillen um, video. If nobody has uh, seen it yet, by all means go to the Historical Society's webpage and watch the video. Um, it features Dean West and it's, uh, it's great. Yep. It is a technical, technical challenge, excuse me, clearly. Video is not turned on. It is not. Okay, we're going to keep going, though. So, Rosemary, you're up next. Do you have anything for us? Almost 84% spent on the budget. Major items that's not included in the expenditures to the expenditures which we'll be working into here. That's exciting news. That's a good news story. Yeah. We were a little pretty worried. Jason still got some. Fills out from the knowledge sheet. That's the next question we have. Just weird. Okay. Okay. Uh, Duncan, Mark, want to say something? Same one, Ryan. You both said something at the same time. Beautiful. We heard you both. Yeah. I don't know what either of you said, but we heard you both. <laughs> and it's going through the speakers. Okay, 
Um, so it sounds like we're in good shape on budget. That's great news. The trend is trending in the right direction. Well, I think we're at one point three nine percent. Must be the chair. <laughs> Most likely. And received a cannabis license approval from the state for not free capital reserves at LC. Hmm. Brian told me this is the only thing we have received from the state. So I did go ahead and print out the guidance for municipalities. Uh, they have a little bit of guidance specifically for uh, Cannabis Control Board, which if you recall, the select board had uh, adopted itself as the Cannabis Control Board. Uh, Let's see. Uh, so the the guidance is largely similar between each, uh, and in this guidance, it starts on page. Uh, we'll take on page five, uh, section four, part B. Uh, describes the municipal regulatory authority. So basically, once we have a local cannabis control board, what kind of decisions can the board make? Um, and there's a little bit more detail here, but our ability to regulate cannabis is pretty limited and it is restricted to zone ordinances. It's restricted to zoning or and ordinances, and it would have to. It can't be for the specific business type. Right. It'd have to apply to any business type. Yes. Yeah. So that it has to be broadly applicable. Hmm. Um. With that said. Uh, the way the process is working from the state is that we will be informed of a license that they have given that, that they would approve. So the complete license has been reviewed by the state and they found it to be complete and acceptable. And so what they return to us is just basic information about is that there is a license application uh, and do we want to, you know, do we have any reason to believe that it violates local ordinances? So unlike the, uh, the town being our uh, board, if there's any violations, we have no additional powers like, like we do with the board, uh, liquor board. That's correct. But has that been clarified? Because we don't really exercise a ton of power over that. But we can it's just if there's a lot of violations, we we, we can suspend a, a license. We can't issue a fine. A longer one. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> there has not been any clarification about that. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the state rules are about suspending licenses for violations. Um, they have not voluntarily give it any power to the local boards. Um, I would hope at the very least that they would take our input if we believe that an institution was violating their license. Uh, do you know, do we know what the process is to report something to the board? I, I don't believe that there is a 
process yet. Um, I think that we would contact uh, the people we've been dealing with at the State Cannabis Control Commission and inform them, uh, but I don't think that they have a process in place yet. Beth, I have two questions. You ready? Ready. So, uh, question number one is: With liquor licenses, there is a written application. Uh, is there no written application in this case? They have made a written application to the state, but there we have nothing to actually sign. <laughs> We must have something to sign. Why would it? Why would we even have a local board? Uh, we don't have anything to sign. There is no form or anything created yet. Uh, but they are asking for our, our input. So how do we give our? <laughs> I don't think there. I don't think anything systematized yet. So I think that we call our or email our contacts at the cannabis control board and inform them. Okay, so we have a bunch. Go ahead. What was your second question, Duncan? Uh, second question is, um, and it sounds like this is all still being worked out uh, in Montpelier. In the case of liquor control and tobacco, uh, there are state liquor control inspectors who periodically go around and uh, you know issue citations if a if a vendor is not uh, following the terms. And conditions of state law and their licenses. Is there any such vehicle currently in existence or that you are aware of that might come into existence for cannabis control? I'm not aware of anything currently. Um, I do believe that they are the, the minutes from the meetings they, they are aware of their responsibility to to regulate licenses, but I don't believe that they have anything in place at this time. Ryan. Hold on one second, please. Are there any other questions from the board? Okay, we had somebody in the audience. Can you state your name? My name is Adam McPadden, and I'm associated with the business that's going with that. So you've heard it. Um, I've been reviewing the rules and the licenses and keeping up with their what they have and what they're planning on. And they are planning to have an inspection arm and an enforcement arm as part of the state CCP. Somebody asked a question about it. That's my extent of what they're planning. Sure. Okay, thank you. Duncan, was that all of your questions? Uh, yeah, I guess I'm still left with a big question mark of uh, what what do we actually do? What action do we actually take? If there's nothing to sign, then what do we do? Just say yes, we approve it. I agree. I mean, I think that we need to have be told how it is that our local board is approving these because I don't see I just rules about how the state is handling it and that the town can't do anything in terms of ordinance or, or zoning that is specific to cannabis. But I don't see anything that tells us how we, you know, state whether we have concerns or not. I think basically the, the state did not grant any authorities to the municipalities, nor are they sharing any of the revenue with the municipalities. But I was not thinking the, about that one. That one's pretty clear. <laughs> yeah, but we have the police enforcement of any issues mm -hmm. that are, are taxpayer fair. Yeah. Okay. We so. The state. <laughs> Rosemary, do you have anything else that you wanted to add to this? No. Okay. It feels to me like we should respond to this. Um, request and say, and ha ask for answers to these questions. How do we tell you that they're approved? Like, what is the process for us to formally tell you? Who's authorized to sign? You know, do they have requirements on the full board signature? Can we designate somebody as a 
signature. We just don't know. Um, if there is a form, where do we find it? Um, Local re revoking of a license would be a good question as well. Similar yeah. to a liquor license. I, I'm confident that, that that there may be something that changes in the future, but that's not. That's okay. You don't have to have all the answers. You're not the state board. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm confident that, they, that there is no provision for a local municipality revoking a license. Well, maybe they have a plan and they could tell you a date. It's worth the question. I think we still need to ask all of these questions yep. before we can act. I don't think we can act, frankly. There's, we literally have nothing to act on or a method to do so. Yeah, just one second. Uh, um, I have some of these notes. It sounds like Evan, you have thoughts too. So maybe if. I'll share my notes with you, Brian, sure. and you can write up and ask the board if there's additional questions that can go back to you. I um, share Eric's feelings on the cost of patrol being all taxpayer based and the state taking all the revenue, which is fine, but it, is there a plan on redistributing that so that the tax these town aren't paying? I, I know patrol. when they were developing this I was on the league board at the time, and the league was very, very active and adamant in some revenue sharing because the, the municipalities are going to be bearing the cost, but there was uh, no uh, stomach from the state on sharing that revenue. We get a small stipend, uh, well, not even a stipend, just a small fee uh, associated with approved licenses. I don't recall how much it is, but it's not. It's right, it's $100 a year. Yeah. Do, do we get income from liquor licenses and enforcing liquor laws and stuff? Yes. So we get a cut of, cut of alcohol sales in the town or something? No. no. You get the annual fee, but we also have the authority to revoke licenses. Um, yes. Uh, uh, I am 41, and uh, uh, I feel your frustration. We've been dealing with it for four months. Our understanding is, is that um, at this point, there is no formal documentation. What the state is looking for is a email, like they sent you, an email back saying that's what we need that for us to get our business. So that's that's what you know we're dealing with. You know, because I think they're developing the process the rules and everything has to go. Yeah, I just said uh, so we approve a lot of things as a board. <laughs> all the time and whenever we approve things there's always a form or requirements on signature or what it is we're responsible for and how we approve it and i think that's the biggest struggle at the moment like there i hear you on it's getting formed but like even if we wanted to approve it how <laughs> you know so yeah and, and the only thing they told us is an email back from the town that's that's all they need. Okay. Like and, and they didn't say that in there. <laughs> the they didn't really want it in triple kit. That's right. <laughs> I agree. I agree. It's been really frustrating. Yeah. Can't even believe the application. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. I can imagine. Yeah. Well, um, so I hear you. We'll do what we can to keep this moving, but I don't think we have quite what we need yet. Um, Beth, I, can yes. I have a, so I'm, I'm sensitive to, uh, the needs of the business owner who I think, you know, kind of seems to be stuck between the state's, uh, inability seemingly to get a, a, a an application process out. So I, I guess I'm, I, I kind of hate to, um, you know, leave, leave the business owner hanging here 
for inaction on the part of the state. Is is there anything you, you think we could do? I mean, because we're not meeting again technically for another month. I kind of hate to leave, you know, leave the business owner hanging out there for that period of time. Well, we get our questions answered. Did, is there any kind of a motion that you think that we could make to authorize yourself as chair to, um, you know, approve approve this if if our questions get answered? Or I mean, you can move whatever you'd like, Frank. Per, you know, I can't prevent you from moving anything. Um, and we are meeting in two weeks. It's two weeks and two days, so it's not a month, but. And just to, just to echo, we we've been ready to go since May first because the state was supposed to be giving us a license on May first. So we are struggling with that later. Yeah. The expenditure. Can I just I just like to know if we approved it tonight, what else do you have? What other hoops are you going to have to jump? To? It's the last thing we're going to ask. You're going to ask. Yeah. So if we if we for example might walk out of here with. Your intention is to improve, and you just don't. The mechanics have to do that yet. Is that good enough? And under good faith, we might need anything more. That would be really valuable. For so, us. how do they inform you that you're authorized? Do they give you a license, or a... that's a good question? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sure if my wife is on. She's the one that's been dealing with the, the state, um, but I am. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, that's exactly what happens because we were pre-qualified as well. So once we were pre-qualified, they send us an e email notifying that we're pre-qualified and then it's followed up with a letter through U.S. Post. Um, so we have the official pre-qualification letter and we will have the official license, which we will have to uh, display um, at the business. But you're not going to get that unless the select board uh, issues their approval back to the state? Correct. That is correct. So the state will not issue us a license without approval from the municipality. That is the last thing that we are waiting on. Our application is complete. We were notified it was complete. They had to vote last week. Um, on the application to send it to the municipality, which they did. Brian got the notification from, I don't know what he received. I didn't receive a copy, but it doesn't sound as though it was a lot of information. I'd be happy to provide anything that the town might need. Um, I could even send it now, <coughs> excuse me, if that would be at all helpful um, because the application process was pretty intense. So we had to have a business plan, operational plan, standard operational plans, uh, security plan, security plan, um, and the list goes on and on. Uh, workers' comp insurance, general liability insurance, business insurance. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is um, a, a big investment, not just in preparation of the documentation, but in preparation of the building to meet the state's requirements. And we can't, um, <clears throat> I'm so sorry, I'm probably, we can't pay our bills until we start to get a return on our investment. So uh, even the two week delay would be, you know, a, a huge burden for us to undertake at this point. So anything that you can do to give it consideration or just a simple notification to the state that the town doesn't object would be wonderful. I, I wholly agree with the concern that has been expressed about lack of anything concrete to act on. And having said that, I am fully in support of us trying to get more information from the state so that this process is easier for the next person that might want a license. Having said all that, I will move to approve the issuance by the state of a license. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll move select board approval. Thank you. Uh, Green Castle Reserve LLC. Yes, thank you, Beth. 
You're welcome. That was exactly my motion. <laughs> oh, sir. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll, I'll second that, Beth. Okay. I, I assume they are outside the village, so there's actually no zoning at all. All right. Beside the Say that again. They're beside the buggy man on Route 15. Okay, so they're outside the village. Yeah, we have no zoning there anyway. So okay. I, I second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Discussion, I'm, Eric. I'm I'm going to vote against the motion because you know I, I understand the burden that's being put on the business owners. But the one that's really dropped the ball here, I think, is the state. And for them, it shouldn't be that difficult for them to come up with some kind of a form to send out to the select board to have signatures, you know, put on and approve it. And, and that's why I'm, I am going to vote against it, because I'd like to see, put a little pressure back on the state to get this to us in two weeks, and we'll approve it. Okay. Any other discussion? I, I just want to make one comment in, in in reference to what he just said. And there's only two towns in the state that are cannabis friendly or label themselves cannabis friendly that have their own cannabis select board. So the state has <coughs> not given that any kind of consideration at this point in time, um, just because they're incredibly busy with the 400 plus license applications that they're sorting through. Um, they've only gotten through, I think, 16 at this point. So I, I don't think the state is going to come through with anything different than what Brian has received in the next several months, uh, simply because there's no demand. Thank you. So are you saying that we are one of three states that is actually, or is towns in Vermont that's voting on this? I think there's two. We would be the third. Uh, no, I think Johnson is one of two that has their own cannabis select board. I feel like there's more than that, but that's okay. Um, I don't know the numbers, so yeah. Um, okay, so there are a couple options for whether or not you wanted to have a cannabis board. I don't remember all of the options. That was a while ago. Um, we have a motion, we have a second. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Okay, we need to do a roll call. Duncan? Aye. Mark? Aye. Evan? Nay. Eric? Nay. I will vote aye, um, and the rationale behind my aye is that I don't think we actually have any controls anyway, so I don't really <laughs> see the point. Uh, so. It passes. Good luck with your business. Thank we you wish you way. all the best. Okay. Um, so, I mean, and since we don't really have any, I, maybe I'll respond. I feel like that's probably Anything the most like appropriate. To, yeah, uh, th there is no, there is no process. So to point. express our displeasure with it. <laughs> Quote you, I'm happy to. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, not happy at all. Okay. Yeah. And, okay. And just to your point about you know how busy they are, so they've had a few years to come up with these. You know, frustration. You know, they 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 take on our application. They ask us for. Think we're all set, and three weeks later they say, "Oh, I need this." And they've just been doing this, and that's why it's now almost July 1st, when we're supposed to be ready to go May 1st. Well, good luck. Yeah, good luck. Yes. Can we just take 30 seconds to make sure I have the name? I, got, I have them for you. Oh, great. You're the person who's uh, on Zoom? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, okay, next up is Jason. Good evening. She didn't do oh, anything else, did you? <laughs> okay. That was great. Are you all set? I'm sorry. I'm going to do that without. That was a big idea. Yeah, that was a really large. Okay. Uh, 
Jason. Uh, good evening. Uh, so I just I didn't have uh, a report for you guys. This is Brian and I'll be together, but for thoughts on your desk. We're going to have a look at it, but it's pretty much uh, for homes, but we got iron truck training done for the year. Uh, and we got some winter salt salt and purchase. All the bills aren't there's one more bill I think I just got my box today. That'll be that another four thousand, same that we saw the others. Oh, okay. Yep. And then that that'll be done. And we're getting our last load of fluoride for the twenty twenty two budget. Uh, this week, for a break. and we got 85% of the roads fluoridated so far off what we had in the previous year. So, and then Sam, we are we hauled the uh, $28,000 worth of sand so far. We got 12000 left to haul. And one of the things on the report was to ask. If possible, we could take some of the money out of the salt budget and fix the sand budget. Just a little bit more sand to meet what we usually put up anyway, which is about 5,000 yards a year. For next year, for the budget we're going into, you mean? Yeah. It wouldn't be. You'd just be netting out, right? Netting yeah. zero. Yeah, if we got a surplus of salt, we saved right. for last year with the brine and stuff. Taking some for the 2020. So, in the sand, so. How much more do you need? Well, uh, for the yards, uh, they do a ton, so I haven't transferred uh, I've done all that to give you a number of uh, yards. But yeah. we're, the pile is just a little over halfway, but we still got $12,000 left in the budget for the call. So I was going to ask for the approval. Possibly take ten thousand out of the salt budget. We're not going to do that until after July first. Yeah. Would it be possible to use some of that budgetary numbers and get some material out of our own debt? If you guys have all the M shop done by then, I know there's a couple of outstanding things. There's some other outstanding the M shop stuff. As far as our certification is done, there is. A few little things that we'll have to address that I've talked to Brian about to be in compliance. Like what? Well, we will need to get a stretcher so it can get secured to the tree. Some things. Uh, there's some trees that need to be took down that were on a prior citation that we had shot game that need to be removed. Uh, they're, on, they're on the land of the sand pit. Gravel uh, pit, they're on the Adjacent land, but they're over eight. What some documentation for three that will be more common? Person's land to take down a tree. Uh, and a couple of signs I got to work, speaking of signs that have to So, that's a big issue. The permit for the last four, then you get. Uh, 75 yards gravel. The outside will come in and ask the uh, speed limit so they don't. That's the speed limit once you enter into where the pit is. So we have the speed limit on the set at 10 miles an hour. And then we have one spot that we're going to try to get drainage so we don't have any sand and water because if there's any sand and water, you have to have a life preserver and a sign statement. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if you can get out and just get out and stay ahead of the water. I haven't quite figured out the stretcher thing because there's only one person over there at any given time. So I don't know if they put their cell phone. That's just what they want. It has to be attached to the screen. Well, it has to be, well, it has to be attached to something that's accessible. Mm -hmm. and the screen is the only thing that, because we don't have any structure over there. I don't really want to attach it to the loader. Attach it to the speed limit sign. <laughs> That'll make them slow down. 
So it doesn't sound like a lot of, it doesn't, I mean, I don't know how much the screen costs. It doesn't sound like a lot of money. It just sounds like a lot of time. Exactly. Future discussion. Yeah. So it is possible to get the material out of our pet. It is. And then we're talking about next year's budgets anyways. So would it be super prohibitive if we just talked about that at our next meeting? Shifting that small budget. Yeah, that's fine. I just want to be sure um, It'd be a net net zero, right? Just be buying less salt, more more sand. And also, um, I see that you said you guys are uh, started the process of installing the proper amount of speed limit signs on the town roads. I think that one's near and near to Duncan's heart, especially. But I don't think. <clears throat> well, is that part of like because we needed some more? To me, or is it because of the well, love county sheriff's department? I kept this in the report from because we started kind of the last one. We're gotcha. Still actively doing it at a pace that you guys said, you know, not to do it. Gotcha. Any three, you know, not all at once. You guys, you know, so we had we install. Yeah, and just on our kind of problem roads. Yeah. Fair enough. You guys approach at the last week. You guys, someone's going to check in to see if the sheriff department's going to enforce the ordinance so we wouldn't have to. I think that's later on. Okay, and the upcoming projects and tasks some are maintenance, equipment uh, maintenance, taking down ash trees, getting ready to work on upcoming grant work. What is that? Uh, well, we had uh, grant approval for one way lane. <clears throat> okay. Okay, cool. Any questions for Jason? I got one. Yep. Maybe even two. Um, are we going to discuss paving bids while Jason is still here? And my second one is uh, we did get an email with regard to mowing on rail trail. I wonder if Jason has any idea when, uh, when they might get to uh, some rail trail mowing. Uh, the rail trail mowing was going to, we're going to start this week. Uh, if, uh, if that's all right, uh, our part timer had some stuff going on last weekend, so he couldn't do it. Uh, it works good to do it when it's raining or something, so there's not a lot of people on the trail to have to stop it all the time and throw the big car. So, for safety in mind, I think it's movement, not much more than just for safety wise. And now, can you repeat your? I was wondering if you're staying for the paving bit. Yes. Well, yeah, we got some other things, I guess. Brian won't even stay for the special ones. Are you guys planning on doing the rail trail twice again this year? Or? That's a good question. I was going to ask Brian uh, about that because uh, there was talk about the like, state on. We would like the state to bow. I don't think the state has any intent on it. Right. So, yeah, yeah, if you guys are going to let us know. It's the, I mean, you bring up a good point with planning it for a rainy day for safety of people on the trail, but is the state paying for our insurance while we're on that trail? No. Well, we you could, already know the we answer. Just kill that. somebody accidentally. Oh my gosh. Yeah. On a right way, that's not ours. I don't even want our equipment out there. That's 100% town liability. Nobody saw that one. We don't have to know it. We don't have to, it's true. We don't know rule 15 or rule 100 C. So you're gonna, are we gonna change what we're doing? What are, what are other towns doing, Beth? Other towns are mowing. Mowing. We know other towns are mowing. Well, Cambridge 
and Hyde Park. To Morris Town. Yeah, and to the best of my knowledge, I'm not aware of any town that has the rail trail through it that isn't public. Cambridge is a little different, though. Cambridge does have some volunteers that are doing the mowing. I don't know if they're doing all of the mowing or not, but a big part of Cambridge being maintained much more regularly than ours is that the town is, a, is at least getting support from volunteers. Evan brings up a good point, and I think it's, I'm, I am wholly in favor of us mowing the rail trail, but he raises a good point with regard to liability and insurance. And I think it, uh, I think it, we should find the answer to that, whether the state will, you know, hold harmless and indemnify us when we're out there and what our insurance company thinks with regard to us mowing on an asset that doesn't belong to us. That's an asset that is predominantly walking and biking. That's something I didn't really think about that before. That's what I mean. It's dangerous. I, I mean, know it. And with more, it costs us stuff on 100, 150 feet. So you've got to constantly watch people coming down that corner in case they stick or something. We, I try to, I'm going to put some training on this with less exposure. I, I think we should get answers personally before you guys mow it. I don't know what the rest of the board thinks. I think it's wise. Duncan and Mark, would you prefer they wait until we have answers on my ability? I would say if, if Brian can get a quick answer on that, um, it certainly doesn't hurt. I, I tend to agree. I think that um, I find it hard to believe that even if we called up our insurance company and asked them, it wouldn't. I mean, how much liability insurance, how much of an increase of payment, I guess, would it mean? I can't imagine it would be anything, but let's find out. Okay. Yeah, awesome. Make it a priority. Oh, I, Dean? I was just going to mention um, uh, I was traveling around in one place that was doing mowing on rail trail. They, uh, they put out signs that, at least on the on the trail itself showing people you know, that mowing was going on that might be a way to increase the safety you know, to tell those people hey, there's mowing head and might want to turn around and ride the other way. Just Something that I saw when I was riding in a different area. Yeah. Yeah, Jason says they do put mowing signs up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sixteen. Um okay, are we good to move on? So we'll find that out. Sure, we're we're back. Good. Okay. Thanks, Jason. Did you any last thoughts? Anything? No, I'm good, thanks. Okay, <laughs> okay cool. Plan purchases. All right. Uh, on our plans purchases for this meeting is uh, electrical work, secondary electrical work at the Ten Alexander Morgan Center. Uh, we got two quotes for this from Gould and from Emerson. Emerson is quite a bit lower because they are uh, taking advantage of some volunteer assistance for some of the not certified parts of the, the job. So what is in Emerson's quote? To me, it just looks like a meter socket and a wire, say panel or anything. And then there's kind of the adder that says, Emerson's estimate neglects an estimated $2,200 of material. Who estimated that? Why didn't they estimate that they were short? Tell us what they were short. So it says assume cost to increase. Assuming it's for the 
$5,530 came from was the addition of the two, but I don't yes. understand where that came from and why it's not on here. Uh, I can't tell you exactly why Emerson didn't include the additional materials, but I was given the estimate of 2,200 uh, by Nat and Howard. Um, and I think there's been further changes. Uh, from so Nat, Nat, would you like to speak to that? Yeah, um, I can speak to further changes about that. Um, but um, Emerson quoted based on the power in Emerson spoke before Emerson quoted. Um, and so we quoted based on what. like we need to so it sounds like like maybe we can separate materials from the emerson because it's not included in what he's talking about we can't separate materials from the gold from what i can see it doesn't see a, i don't see a breakout of costs this is no longer about coal anyways and both of them reference 200 amp meters not just one they both do um and I guess the other question I have is, did the village trustees vote to give us parts at cost? I feel like, yes. Uh, they did, I believe, and Duncan will have to help me out with this, but I don't believe that those parts that Howard mentioned were in the report. I believe that that's how they, I assume that we 
Then what parts were they talking about? Transformer. All. Oh. There's no transformer involved. <clears throat> um, it's a pole and wire. Um, and the quote from Troy specifically says that the meter socket, the riser, and the wire will be the responsibility of the customer. So they were they did not intend to provide that as part of their quote or part of the materials that they would be supplying. Okay. So it sounds like uh, we need to know what we're, it sounds like we need to get revised quotes is what I think I'm hearing. All right, well, this, they put, yes, there's more. Well, yeah. there's more. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, in that the trench, the there's 150 feet of trench in this return. And um, Lisa got a uh, great fabricator who's done the work for us at the park um, to, get, to put in the, the number. And I, I don't have it. Is Lisa, is Lisa on the ball? No. No, okay. That's, um, I think it was like 660 bucks or something like that for, for the trench. And um, Doug and Matt Bill. I believe that the trench was, did not require, that the cost for the trench did not require prior for for political discipline, less than $1,000. And it was budgeted at 750 anyways. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I would have thought that that, uh, that that public works was going to do it, but they've got, but their pockets are really wide, and you know, and the pocket that Craig Fetty has is a, is a he's got a mini, so it's a small bucket. There'd be a lot less equipment. So, but uh, so that's cool. So no, is the county for somewhere? Is that? that might be. Yeah. It's a county for the budget. I'm yes. assuming that's just. Digging and backfilling, that's not the cost of the conduit. Right, yes. No, I got the conduit in Alice. Conduits in this number. Well, mine, and Johnson Harbor are already. Okay. It sounds like if we're doing materials, we should ask for revised quotes that break out the material cost, which it sounds like you have a couple, maybe, and then the labor costs, which it sounds like you're in contact with contractors. But... Yeah, I mean, I'm... I would just get the quotes. You should get the quotes because I was getting it from Emerson and you got the whole language that you got. So the deal we got with Emerson is that he, at this point, I think, is going to do close up and it's going to be his stand. Okay. Can we get can we get this organized and I like here's this part and here's this so part by vendor? It's going to be a little while. I got my I'm up to my keister again, Tuesday night block. Yeah. So but I will. And that's what we come for. Jason? Yeah. <clears throat> Brian reached out to me and called Big Save for your contractor ticket because it comes uh, by the form. So it has 30 days. If you guys don't have the contractor there, I'll have to know what you're like. Okay. Have they, have they surveyed the site then? They, it's tomorrow. I'm afraid to go to the one that's at 140. Because what I was told. Yeah, no, 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 that's right. No, that's fine. I guess it was 30 days, so we, we got time. I just so, you. Howard, if this is a second priority, do you have a timeline for completion? Of the whole project? Like, how are we working backwards? I want to make sure that we have time to approve and get, you know, materials through the pipeline. So that it can be completed oh, whenever your deadline oh, is. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll speak to I'll speak to Emerson, Emerson the next day, and, and you know, decide exactly who's going to do what. He will price. I will get him to price his part of it specifically. And I guess I we meaning I mean the town will will do a little bit more research into these into the actual prices of the goods that we have to provide. Sure. And we'll be and I also want to put a factor in there for a little bit of um, uh, uh, quote volunteer on quote time. Um, it's not one thing to solve all that there. So I'm gonna to have to have people help me like backfill the trench. Now, I'm an old man, I'm not about to go back from so I 
I can volunteer uh, if we're, worst case scenario. You're all okay too. I can, I can volunteer to dig the trench and backfill it with my little backhoe. Um, maybe Eric would want to help with his little backhoe too. <laughs> Not meeting, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> I, I, mean, I, I just want I just want people to bear one thing in mind, and that is that the village needs to have the meter socket, the riser, and the weather head installed before they will run their wire over to the pole. And that might have a bearing on a discussion that we have later on in the evening. Now, Duncan, didn't, didn't you tell me the other day that uh, Nate wants to have the parts there and they will install them on the, on the pole? Yes, yes, he will do that. If we had, if we had the meter socket, the riser, and the weather head, uh, he will install all those parts for us and then run the wire over from the other pole and make a connection. Um, but that, that should be the first step that we accomplish. Yes, I quite agree. Will it keep the project moving if we approve those expenditures? Yeah, I mean, it would help Just that it. portion? Yeah, yeah. it keeps things rolling. Got. 2,000 bucks for parts seems to fit in this, in, in what Allison you know, had, had, handed to me today at 1568. Right. And, that, and so I'd have uh, to see that. <laughs> well, okay. So, okay, let's keep things moving because we're way, back. we haven't even got to our regular report stuff yet. So, would the board like to make a motion? And if so, what would you like to motion? I'll make a motion to authorize up to $2,000 for the parts needed to uh, install the meter socket and riser on the pole. We have a motion. And that's going to be for the conduit that goes in the trench for this yeah. extension of the secondary side, I guess. Right. Well, is that part of it, Duncan? Um, it, it could be. I don't know. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't know what the <laughs> cost of the conduit over to the building would be, but that would certainly give um, give us what we need in terms of getting the meter socket uh, in the meter socket in breaker would be a, an integral unit okay. and then a 30 foot riser with a weather head and the wire that would be what would be needed by the village to complete their work on the project. That comes to uh, not quite a thousand bucks. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a second. So, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, this necessarily means that we're going to the Emerson, is that correct? No. Does not mean we're going with any specific vendor. Okay. Um, I, I don't know how that works with these quotes because. Well, this is for materials, right, Duncan? Your motion is about materials specifically. Yes, and I don't know whether, is Emerson supplying the materials? No, we are. Emerson, but Gould had planned on it. So I don't know if Gould would still want to be involved. They'd have to refresh their coal anyways, because it was only good till yeah. January. So they can take that tiny bit off or say, we're not interested in that. Yeah, I, I, I have no problem reaching out and contacting Gould. I, I don't, if I remember Gould's quote, it did not include anything above the meter socket. One second. <laughs> Take my work habits home. Um, we have a motion for materials right now. We could have a different motion for work if we wanted to have a motion for work. I'm not sure we do or not, whatever. But for materials, very specifically right now, unless you want to change your motion. Okay, any more discussion on materials? And is that motion, Beth, this is Mark, for $2,000? Is that, up, was that your? Up okay. to. So that up, up to $2,000. According to what I heard from Howard, that should be more than enough to do that work and get and have the village basically do the work. Yep. Yep, and then once we get past the breaker, it's our baby. Yes. And, and Eric's going to dig a trench. Perfect. Okay. 
Any other questions, Mark? Nope, I'm peaceful. Excellent. Yeah, you're one of many. <laughs> uh, how about you, Duncan? I'm good. Okay, you good? Yes, okay. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I heard an aye over there. Who yes. seconded? He gave us a thumbs up. Uh, okay, eyes have it. So. Thank you. I will get on it. Okay. Thank you. you. Want to stick around? Uh, okay, next up. More plan purchases, Brian? No more plan purchases. You. Let's move on to the next topic. All right. Next up, uh, discussion about the Unification Committee uh, has suggestions for a mural on the garage. So, on on the portion of the town garage faces the rail trail right now is a big beige corrugated sheet metal. Um, it is a really good location for us to do some kind of beautification activity like making a mural. Um, so Brian, rather than going through a whole discussion, I'd like to keep moving because everyone got the whole, all the correspondence on yeah. this. So I'm hoping we can make this quick. So and that, that is my stopping point on this. We've got a suggestion. <laughs> Perfect. <for control. laughs> We've got people willing to do the work. We have a committee that has the money that they need to supply it. Uh, is there any further discussion or questions? Um, and this does have to have a motion because it's over $1,000. Uh, it will be over $1,000 when it's all told, but it is more than anything, it's um, something that we're putting up on a public building. So the okay. board should, should move for that reason. Yeah. Okay, so hopefully everyone read the materials. Thank you for putting those together, Kyle, uh, and sending them out to us. We just want a quick thought, thought, thought. I would like to uh, a quick, yeah. I would prefer if they were, if the murals were independent and on a, yeah, I don't know the best way to put it, but if it was on something that was affixed to the building, because if we have to do work for that building in the future and it's painted on the steel, that aches that could be avoided ahead of time. And I would also like to see examples, hopefully, if they could be given. Are you okay? That you haven't seen. Five minutes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We've been working really hard on this, so I know it's very rushed, but we've also. Um, examples we've met with so since the correspondence can you share the examples while you're explaining so we can keep moving keep moving forward we're gonna we're going to i think this is going to go through for what it's worth we're not killing your idea okay um yes so we have um in Watsula, is a um they came up with Sketches for us to look at at our last beautification uh, meeting. We um, loved all three, but we decided that this one that we named Human for Johnson is the one that we would like to start with. It'll be on four large four by twelve sheets of plywood. She's. They are going to sketch it on these four pieces of plywood, but they're going to be together as one mural. So they will be independent. Building. This is the sketch that they presented to us, but we have since gotten, um, we, we gave them some suggestions and modifications, and they have since sent us another sketch. And I only have it on my phone right now. Okay. So this was the original, and this is now the modified. So, what we asked him to do is to take out the signs, replace them with different icons that depict different businesses and institutions that are in the town. So things like a sap bucket, a, a gardening tool, a, let's see, what else did they put in there? Um, a cap and gown for MVU, um, a paintbrush for VSC in the studio store, um, a skateboard for the skate park. So this is the modified version of the zoom in if you want to. <coughs> And this would be the center mural that would be on these big pieces. And um, 
we gave them sort of the loose, the loose uh, theme of environmental justice and how it relates to our community. So just one second, Kyle. Uh, for those of you on Zoom, if you look at my profile picture, Beth Foy, you'll see the image. It's up there. Thank you. So we'll be using $1,000, which is a third of our annual budget towards this project. We're gonna fundraise for the last We have already started. Blair is with me today, and Blair is an amazing expert. <laughs> and we had a really good successful fundraising campaign with Little Cow, so we're gonna sort of do a similar, um, similar campaign fund to raise the rest of the, of the funds to pay in and for the materials. And then we're hoping that Public Works will help us install. It's going to be a really big mural. Mm -hmm. And the big part of it is for impact so that you can see it from the rail trail because it's not right on the rail trail, it's a little bit between it. So we want people to be able to see it as they're walking and riding by. And then we have two more sketches that would be then phase two and phase three for future years. So eventually that whole facade will be filled with art. Are there any questions for Carla? That's good. Not, not, not bad. No, oh, I think it looks great. This isn't changing anything for you guys down there, is it? I don't know if we plow snow up against the No. no. The only thing we'll be looking at to do that is hit inside of the images. Right. So just like secure it on the back side. There is a there, 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 like, car. So maybe we would have to have So before. So this is where we're cooking. It's going to be easier. Yeah. You take up a lot of that space. Well, that's fine. It's just there are supports inside. Yeah. They're spread out pretty far. So you might have to figure out inside what to cook. So it pulled it up. So the floor sizes are exactly picked. Okay, so uh, I make a motion to authorize in the mural to be attached to the woodworks building. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll make a second with uh, a question for Eric as to whether he would accept this as a friendly amendment which would be um, a courtesy notification to the village trustees since these buildings technically are jointly owned by the town and village. I would accept that, that's a good point. So you're pending approval or just courtesy? Just a courtesy. Them we're doing it. I'm, I'm suggesting a courtesy notification. Okay, sounds like the friendly amendment is accepted. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Me. Aye. Aye. Okay, it's unanimous. The ayes have it. Thank you very much. Those look great. Can't wait to see them. Yeah. By the way, that took more than five minutes. So in case you, in case you didn't hear what Kyle just said, she said this, they should be up in September. It's going to work all summer on it. Cool. Thank you both. Um, and you're welcome to stay, as always. Skate park and well, that, uh, healthy Little Mile Valley. Yes. So the you got a copy you received by correspondence. You have a packet. Uh, description of an agreement between uh, the town and healthy Little Mile Valley. Uh, healthy Little Mile Valley is contributing to help. Uh, with some of the efforts the skate park has for improving conditions at the skate park and kind of getting a handle on uh, activities there again. Uh, and supported by by the Memorial Valley and they would like yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, primarily primarily from the tobacco fund, they'd like to donate that uh, the agreement here has some uh, requirements that the town, by way of the skate park, will have to complete. Uh, these are all activities that the town 
in this case, partner are interested in completing it anyway. This is just additional support for completing it. Just clarification. So um, on where it says that, where it references the town of Johnson agrees to, I just want to make sure that Skate Park like owns that. You're good with the, the, skate, park, right? the skate Park owns these follow these items. Yeah. Yes. Um, the letter, one thing is different from the letter of agreement. Uh, and this is been discussed verbally up in the Valley, and it's okay. Um, it does say that we will, if this, if, it's as if this agreement is covering uh, putting up the fence at the parking lot. And it's, we decided that other projects were more relevant, and it's not even in our, the budget anymore. And that's okay. I have, uh, we want that fence, but I found another grant to get one. Okay. Are they okay with us adding a note when we sign to remove that line about the fence? Are they okay with us putting a note when we sign to remove the fence bullet? Uh, I, Just so it's in writing that we're not doing the fence as part of this. I mean, it's a contract, so I just want to make sure that the contract reflects the agreement. Yeah, okay. I'm sure. I mean, they accepted the uh, with them. You know, the, the fence is not in this budget. Yep. So there's verbal. You know, make yourselves happy about it. So who's the uh, contact person? Is that you? Yeah. Okay, so we should have that identified. Yep. Okay. Um, thoughts from the board? Agreement for the amendments. Recommended. We have a motion. Do we have a second? A second. We have a motion and a second. All, uh, any discussion? All those in would, favor? Would uh, this right now, the way this is written, if this is going to, if if number eight is going to be struck, or not number eight, whatever it is, the fence, the fence one, um, two D, I guess. Um, should we have the authorizing signature on this be the select board chair since since a change is going to be made anyway? I don't make that clear. Yeah, I think but I said you that. You did most of the chair. I think Duncan's point is but Duncan the Royal Valley asked me to sign it. Oh, I, oh, it's yeah, we need I have no. Yeah, and neither do I. I don't care. I didn't think it was a big deal. I'm sorry. It's not a big deal. I think that good point was just that. We'll just update it. It's okay. It does actually say something. Yep. Yep. Okay. So good point on the additional update. Okay. And I assume the additional update is accepted by both motioners. Why not? Okay. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Right. And that's unanimous. I just have it. I'll sign a copy and shoot it off. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. Next up. Next one can be quick, right? Historical Society member appointment and resignation. Yes. Uh, Tom Carney has resigned, and uh, Dennis Richards is recommended for appointment to one of the open seats. So this is two different motions. Yes. A motion to uh, regretfully accept Tom Carney's resignation from the Historic Society. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Now, Dennis Richards, is that their recommendation for the seat that Duncan had left that we had already posted? It is a recommendation for one of the open seats. There were two. There were, two. Well, there well, were two. two, and now there's one more. So there are currently three vacancies. Oh. And the Historic Society has recommended Dennis Richards. Yeah. For one of the other vacancies. Motion to appoint Dennis Richards to the Johnson Historic Society. We have a motion. Second. second. We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And you'll on, on yep. the board forum, Facebook. We'll, we'll make the post again. Just to make sure. Uh, would we like to put them in uh, the news and citizen? We don't usually put non-regulatory committees up on uh, News and Citizen. Is it free? No, it's not. Um, 
So no. Okay. I think if the Medical Society wants to use their budget to do that, they should certainly feel free to do so. Their budget. Yep. Okay. I would like I would like to suggest um, multiple postings on Front Porch Forum. Um, and Brian, can you just make sure that the the ad, I, I think the last ad was a little bit nebulous. It said um, members for the Historical Society. And I think some people confused that with um, a member, a, a trustee. Um, so just, just clarify that it's a trustee that we're seeking not members for the Historical Society. Okay. Clarification, thank you. Okay, next up, follow up from the last meeting. Yes, uh, the follow up from the last meeting, the first item up is a uh, discussion of uh, the potential for a fifth public works operator. Uh, so we, Jason and I spoke to the Public Works Group. Uh, you know, they're definitely in support of getting, of still having a fifth employee. Um, there was a lot of concern shared by the employees about completely eliminating uh, part time support, but they, you know, we, with a fifth employee, we would expect to not use uh, our part time help as much, but it, our part time help can fill in uh, at times and uh, under certain circumstances that has been very helpful. And so we're reluctant to give it up entirely. Well, there's a difference between part time help and on call help. And if you're talking about filling in as needed, that's on call. That is not the same thing as part time. It is not exactly the same thing, but we. Uh, using our part time help currently, we don't pay him uh, to be on call. If he's unavailable, he's unavailable. So I think that, I was gonna say the question that, I mean, we had on our last agenda item, um, whether or not we should introduce a fifth employee. And I think the question taking away, taken away was, um, would there be, and I'd like to hear from Jason on this, actually, no offense, Brian, but it's his crew. Uh, I, the um, question was really, would you be interested in a fifth employee and not having a part-time person and what that would mean for the crew? Um, but I'd like to hear your thoughts on staffing. If you could speak, just speak up so that they can, Duncan and Mark can hear you well. Uh, first off, I'd like to point out probably all know that for years we had five employees and a part time and that supply we had that taken away and the workload and the amount of little things that takes to get things done has increased with every you know with every organization that we help I guess or committee I guess we help and stuff like that and our so us getting a fifth employee and taking the part time employee I feel like it's a step back a little bit. Uh, all the guy, all the people in the, over there uh, would prefer to keep our part-time employee and have a fifth guy, our fifth person. Uh, Good job. Yeah. Uh, mainly because in the future, part-time person like the one we have now, the one we have now is irreplaceable. I don't think we're ever going to find a part time person or employee that can do with this one yet. I don't think we should eliminate that position at all. Uh, it's very helpful for the winter months, especially if we're trying to get back to what we had set up where the employees can take time off in order to use their CTO time and not have to. Struggle with scheduling in the summertime to get projects done and still lose time. Uh, I would like to see us at least stay where we were, not go backwards a little bit. Uh, if possible. 
And by stay where you were, you mean have the five employees and also the part time. Yeah, because me and Brian talk, I, I think he feels the same way. We're not going to be able to find one. Like when we have some kids, let's be able to replace them. It's very slim, but no one's going to be looking to do that kind of work that he does. Because I'm, I'm like, you know, we're going to have to find some kids that will that. So we don't know how, much, how many more years he's going to do that. It's not a long term thing. Ask him. I just don't. Okay. Yeah, we we brought up the what the board had discussed about uh, having more available for contract but, and other part time occasional help. Uh, and I, I think that they felt better about having somebody on staff uh, to make that up rather than having the option of bringing in a part time and contract help. Um, remind us the budget for the year, Brian. So right now we're budgeted at having a fifth employee and a part-time employee. Yes. But only with 3% raises, which this year. inflation is higher than that. Fuel's higher. Salt's higher. It is. Paper's higher. Electricity's the same. Because yeah. Go ahead, Eric. I mean, <laughs> I was a huge advocate for getting a few, fifth employee, and it took a few years to get there. Um, when we went to the voters to sell it, we, we indicated that we felt, that we thought it would uh, reduce the amount of overtime as well as virtually eliminate the need for a part-timer. Um, reality came to be that uh, it did not reduce a lot of overtime, and we still needed a part timer. I still see a need for a fifth employee. However, at this time, I got reservations. I don't want to jump into it yet because, you know, as Evan just pointed out, the the economy, the inflation is the highest since '82 or whatever it was. You know, gases prices are who knows where they're going to end. I'd rather see us just hold off a while and see where all of this sugars out. And uh, we're going into a new budget with the budgeted three percent increase. We got union negotiations to go through, we don't know where that's going to end out. There's just a lot of variables and unknowns out there that I think right now I, I would not be supportive of. Hiring on a fifth employee. I'd like to add to what you said about uh, overtime. One second, Mark. When it was brought in to us, when I was an employee and not the supervisor, we were asked to do we to come up 50 hours each and support that fifth employee and go from 300 down to 250. Mm -hmm. And we said yes. And this winter, this is a part time. Everybody's well in their own stuff. I think we stay well within what we overtime. I, mean, I know what they're at. I just would ask that you understand how much work that they're doing now and patients and stuff that people are kind of putting on. And I'm going to let's take off. I'm going to do 60 hours, I guess, by July 1st or go to the second bank. So I think there's a big need for another employee or expectations of more certain workloads not getting done. Um, I just want to say, Mark, one second, but I just want to say that I'll just tell my view. I don't have the board's view. My view is you should never plan your vacation around a work schedule unless there's really a true reason that that work must get done. We're talking about 
grading a road, that's not a good reason to not take a vacation. Um, so I just want to convey that. I think using PTO is really important. So I hope that I hope that you feel that way, Jason. I don't care how long your list of things is. It's, you're always going to have a list of things. And if it means that it is five things longer than it would have otherwise been, fine. That's, I understand. I'm talking about the guys in the I hear you. I hear you. On so that's side. hard. And yeah. If you guys don't mind us taking time out of nowhere, I think they'll all jump at the. I just think there, there's going to be some phone calls. No, I hear you on the winter side of things. So please don't take time in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> so that, I mean, there's six months of the year that we're not taking time. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. So, and with the grant projects that we can only do in this warmer fire of the six months, it's either we do, you know, I know what you're saying. If one's not planned, there's no possible way that that will work for us. Everybody, I totally hear you. Here's the thing, like of all of these things though, a lot of them aren't grant funded. Like I understand we need to maintain our roads. It's important. Like, you know, sometimes we just have to suck it up a little bit, but I, I understand your point, your argument about this play. Mark? Being on vacation myself, it, it's, it's really a good thing to do. But, um, even if, even if we decided we needed a fifth employee, which I'm not sure that I can make a vote for that, <clears throat> what, what are the chances we'd find this person? I mean, every time I look in the paper, Essex and towns that pay much higher than we do are trying to recruit for people. And I assume this is a CDL person also. That's something that's worth discussing. Um, but I think we have to come to an agreement in principle of whether we're interested in a fifth employee or not. Well, we're not, let's, we need to be very transparent. We're not advertising a job and we got an application. Yes, uh, I, I, that's true. I wasn't specifically referring to the applicant we had. We had discussed uh, the last time that we were hiring, it was a CDL. We only advertised for people who had a CDL. Yeah. And we discussed at that time, given the low number of applicants, um, whether we should consider opening it up for, to folks that didn't have a CDL. Uh, and I think that's still an option worth considering. Uh, even though we did last time get a terrific employee who has good experience um, and you know does have a CDL and everything else, we didn't need to really delve that hard into it last time, but it's worth doing. But your point's a good one, Mark, that we didn't get, I mean, we hardly got any applicants. It took a very long time to get applicants. Um, and I believe the applicant we do have right now is not CDL licensed, correct? He is. Oh, he is, okay. But to your I'm point. I'm right about that, aren't I? Uh, Sorry, but did you say applicant or person we hired? No applicant. Okay. You yes, already right. have the, the person is, hired. Yeah, the applicant it, it does not have a CD. Okay. Unless something changed that I'm not aware of. Okay. Having a fifth employee does you need to tie in to question that I asked Jason earlier about getting gravel out of our own pit, which could actually shave a lot of money out of the budget. So there is a give and take. Um, our part-time employee is trained in that field and we could actually save the taxpayers money, but it needs to be made a priority of the part hours if they were kept with a fifth employee, where the priority would be in my mind. I'm not saying it has to be all 600 hours, but that expense alone could save us sixty thousand dollars this year, which pays a salary for an employee. It's not all benefits. Okay, so I think we've heard lots of things on the table. Do we want? What would we like to do, if anything, right now? 
I guess just to answer to Evan's point, um, yeah, we've got the MSHOP training now. If we had a fifth employee, we could get into the gravel pit. A lot more extracting from it. But that's going to cause another problem where we have a very limited source left and we're sort of been uh, mixing it with purchasing and, and pulling out of there. If we pulled out of there completely, um, you know, we have two years left, three, who knows? Not, not much. Nobody knows. <laughs> okay, I think we should keep moving. So would we like to do something with a, a fifth employee at this time or would we not like to? Eric saying, hold off. Evan, what are your thoughts? I would like to post for applicants. Okay, thank you. What, um, Duncan, what are your thoughts? I think we need the fifth employee. I'm a little worried about um, the fact that originally, as Eric pointed out, we did try and sell it to the taxpayers as uh, the fifth employee might save on overtime and um, part-time work. So I'm, I'm sort of parked where Eric is. I'm, I'm more than okay to wait another month uh, before posting. Uh, Mark? I'm, I'm um, also with Eric. I, I'm not ready to pull, you know, pull the trigger on this. Okay, quite yet. Because I'm hearing some quite yet at the end of these statements. So um, we'll put it on our September list um, and determine if we want to reassess at that point. Does that work for everyone? Any concerns with that? Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, Next up, interview planning for rec coordinator. Uh, is there anything else for Jason? Paving. Paving. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll swap 11 and 9. Actually, we'll do 9 earlier. Interviewing for rec. Okay. Uh, our process is planned right now. Or, uh, excuse me. We have, we have to plan a process for interviewing for the rec coordinator position. Um, Typically, we the position that we have hired the most for has been our highway operator. The way we usually work that is myself and the department chair or the department head uh, interview the candidate first, and then we bring it to the full board with the candidates that we've selected for advancement. Um, because the rec department is a department of one, there is no department head, and I do prefer to have to not do interviews alone. I think that you get that I get much better results when I can talk about them and work through them with another person. So I'd like to bring in some other individuals to do the interview with me. Um, in particular, I'd like to invite uh, membership from the skate park and rec committees. And if anybody from the select board would also like to sit in, we can do that. But I'd like to keep it to one person from each committee not creating a massive number of people that the person has to come in for. Fair enough. I personally think that would be a great representative from this life for because you love rec. Yeah, I do want you to. Did it near and dear to your heart, and I think you would do a great job. Thank you. So kind. Like it's maybe not a compliment, but I appreciate it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I would like to be there. I do care very much about youth sports. Uh, very specifically, so good with that. Oh, I'm good with that. Duncan, Mark, absolutely. Okay, next topic. We're good. I'm, I'm all good. So, uh, we'll plan with the interview committee uh, dates, and we'll do that. Um, I think that it'll be. It would be. It is unlikely that we could have a candidate for you to review before our July sixth meeting, but I think that our that yeah later in july i think it's very reasonable that we could have a candidate and if things go well maybe we can have a candidate before that but we've got some already we do we have uh, actually a number of good applications good. so that's that's good to hear very good yeah 
I, I'm I'm very excited for the the candidate pool we've got, and uh, I think we're gonna I think we're gonna have a hard time making a good selection. Okay. Uh, next up, I have the first draft of the economic development part. Can I can I suggest that we go to the paving bid so that Jason doesn't have to hang around? Sure. Okay. <laughs> hey, good drive home on six volt lights. <laughs> uh, um, doesn't find it as amusing as we do, apparently. All right. We received bids from Pike and Hutchins, and I don't see them in your packet, or at least the packet that I printed. Does not play hell. Um, Rosemary, if you do me a favor. You have them in their email, right? I didn't see them. I didn't see them. I don't believe that I emailed them separately to you, apart from the pack. They were supposed to be in the pack. So, Is it all of River Road West? And What are you at? Wait, wait, wait. What are you talking about? I was just trying to see what I covered. Uh uh. Okay. Can you, sorry, can you say it again? Because I wasn't listening. Uh, look for two it covers the payment that's there now, and there's a section that we can see. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. The section there that's there now that we want to so the down there. Oh, I see. Curve. Right, for a little sand. And that addition to it doesn't touch the uh, metal jacket portion of that metal potentially in the future. I'm assuming it's in the town right away, so it wouldn't. It, it is. We're not extending this off of our. Existing oh, road. No. We're just paving the existing road. And to turn around, we're not extending. We're just the road with was on uh, wide. Just then put the two little approaches on a couple feet, not doing a whole turn around. This is enough for Mark to come up and solve, shut it off, come back around. Yeah. And then Clay Hill had uh, resurfacing. Is that from the quad road all the way down? No, that's from the college, just before the college turn down to. Uh, so is that going to solve the water problem that Scott's been having? It is my top Do you have them? I do. Can I ask uh, Jason a question? Are are both of these shim and pave, or is there some grinding involved, or especially on Clay Hill? Yeah, on Clay Hill, there's a, a milling. They're going to take off two inches and put back an inch and a half. And on River Road West, it's a uh, reclamation, and we're going to add a six to eight inches. Plants on top of it to stabilize and stiffen up the under generally before they repave. Pearl so, Street. Did, did I, I had a hard time hearing reclamation and addition of uh, plant mix? Yeah, we're going to add six to eight inches of plant mix on top. And when they, before, before they reclaim it, we're going to come in and spread it on top. And then they're going to reclaim that in when they do it. So it puts it underneath the, the roadbed. 
How much is that going to elevate the total road surface, Jason? We're going to do a finished grade after after they do it and compact it. So it might elevate three to four inches. I think the plan, I, sorry, I've also been looking at this, but the plan on uh, Clay Hill at least was that the, road, the finish road would be a little bit lower than so. the- Yeah, Clay Hill will be a half inch lower than it is right now. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That's pretty high. Thank you, Rosemary. So we received two bids, uh, one from Whitcomb and one from Pike. What was our, uh, we got a grant money for this, right? What was our grant amount again? No grant money for this. Uh, this is not one we got grant money for, okay. We had two years of budget, really. We do. Time to find it. What is our budget amount in that case? About hundred. Uh, it's ninety-five thousand, I believe. For one year. For one year, and um, we typically combine at least two years. And I think we actually. We do have some savings in money. Yeah, we do have some okay, reserve money. Okay. Going back. Um, it's not a reserve fund, but money dedicated to highway expenses. Doesn't have to be returned the same way. Do we have enough? We have enough in, to do either uh, in the FY23. Okay. We budgeted 100,023 and then 95 last year. And we have some money left from the year before. Perfect. And the uh, both of the bidders. We're aware that we would be looking at bids today. Yes. And not, not having the bids in front of me, can somebody tell me what they are? Yes, yeah, sure. They're Pike Industries um, for a, for a total of $208,495. And then uh, Whitcomb is a total of $194,085.50. For the same scope of work? Yes. Uh, Pike estimates that they're going to use uh, almost 400 more tons of material. Total terms from Whitcomb is for 1,483. And Pike is 1,805. Yeah. Hmm. Well, can I say something? Yes. So in these quotes in front of you, I asked both of them if they would like us to participate like we did on uh, other projects mm -hmm. um, with a greater enrolling it. And Whitcomb said that they would they prefer that. Uh, and Pike said they would like to do it themselves. So in that quote, that's why I'm with them that Mike is a little easier to do it because they would be doing the road grading and compacting of River Road West. In Pike's quote, they're doing it all because they don't I don't blame them from a liability standpoint, yeah. frankly, but yeah. No, if we don't have a, a match that we're trying to meet, here we don't participate. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if I get this. I yeah, 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 please. I would like to go with fight just because the guy got what I was talking about, it felt better about the bar coming across the road and they wanted to all work themselves and I he wanted to bring up the vehicle as far as the time that we don't have to set aside any time to create or come back just hauling the plant next for the road west and spread it on top of when they come to the is the person you spoke with the person who'd be overseeing the project I can't say for sure. I don't think they're the two people I spoke with. I think are the ones that uh, get a bit. Right, right. 
sometimes it's a project manager, sometimes it's not. So I was just curious. Yeah. Wit Cummit might be the project manager for Pike's a big enough organization that I'm pretty sure it's a salesperson. I'd be surprised if we got one of the project managers to do sales call. Mm -hmm. One of the things I asked for was are they pretty scheduled? Are they pretty booked cool with their scheduling? And one thing that Dr. Ryan Bell was, even if we push it off until next year, because I'd rather see them do it when the weather's warmer and the temperatures are bright. So we don't end up like clay delivery right now and not bonding properly to come out. I personally want to get throw the money away. That's not going to be. What did they say about the scheduling? Let's do this through the summer. Yeah, like it would be later on. And obviously, we'd have, once they found out, they probably get be better. I'm here to win it. Peter, tell me exactly. But they were both sounded like they both would not get to it at the same time. Yeah. So you think it would be late fall? That's what my fear is. Not if, yeah. if we did choose one, and we could, you know, if we did it, I proved it, we could at least get it on the schedule. So if they couldn't do it when the temperature is right this year, they could schedule it for you know, next year when you know, we can be here for that. Well, we'd be in that um, fiscal budget anyway, we, still in the spring. We could select and approve contingent upon a due by date, you know, April 5th or October 15th or November 1st or something along that line. That was one thing they both agreed on. They both looked at when they said it was paid Beth, I basically can't hear Jason. Um, did did he say that Whitcomb, the Whitcomb bid around for you? The Whitcomb bid has the town doing some of the work. Yes. So Whitcomb has the town doing some of the work. They're both booked out pretty solid. They both agreed that the problem with Clayhill right now is that they were done too late in the season, so they didn't bind correctly. What else did I miss? Did you say that you could approve it this year and then they could put it on like next July's schedule That's what, and just, it would be the same price or? That, no, I didn't say that. If I, did, if, I meant, if I said that, that's not what I meant. What I told them is that what we're looking for is to get it done like it was proper for pay temperatures. Said that they were pretty booked for the year, they wouldn't know exactly until they found out whether or not they got the bid. So, we did the exact time for them. But uh, my recommendation is that we do it when it's optimal time for payment, turn out the best. Can you hear now, Duncan? I can. Um, one of my questions is that we don't have we don't have money enough to do both anyway. Why, why are we even talking about doing both at this point? Doing both? Or... What am I missing? Why are we, uh, do you mean both roads? You mean Clay Hill and River Road West? What do you yeah, mean? Yeah, I mean, if I heard you correctly, one, one bid was 185 and change and one was 208. And we've got a, we've got ninety five thousand dollars in the budget for paving. So we have this disconnect there. Let me clarify. We have um, remaining money from the fiscal year twenty one. So there is some money out there. I'm out TBD, but it's not a ton, but there's some. We have uh, ninety five thousand that was in fiscal year twenty two. So the year we're ending now. And then we have a hundred thousand in our fiscal budget going in as of July first. So just to be clear, um, if we don't spend that money by July first and we don't dedicate it for a specific purpose, i.e., paving, it's not in any budget. Yep. So we we need to do that. Um, so, so really, we potentially have a not hundred ninety-five thousand dollars available. Yes, a little bit excessive. Yeah. 
Yeah, a little bit in excess of 195. So Rosemary's saying we have an additional 30 to $40,000 in a reserve also. That was reserved out a couple of years ago? Yes. Where, where was it? No. We if we move to approve either of these, we have enough going into our fiscal year July 1. Um, if we can allocate our fiscal year 22 right now, if we can allocate those funds right now to be spent in fiscal year 23, we're in good shape. Bye, Mark. Hey, so even if we do all this, what keep what's the sense that we'll be able to complete these projects in a timely manner that won't be too late to have the same problems occur that you were talking about last that it happened uh, we don't know or have guarantees they want us to commit before they will give us a spot on their calendar well, I think what Jason was saying is that perhaps we could talk to them if they couldn't fit it in early enough this year, we could talk to them about scheduling for next year. We don't know that we could guarantee the price though, if we scheduled for the spring. They well, won't guarantee the it'll price. Go it'll go down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not likely. Well, either way, we're kind of late in the process anyway. I mean, what can you do? Well, I agree with Eric. Uh, uh, setting a, you know, setting a drop dead date of October 15th is, is reasonable. And they will, you know, they'll argue hard that um, if the pavement temperature is 50 degrees, that it's okay to pay, but we should probably hold, hold firm. Okay, well, whatever the board would like to do, now would be the time. I'd make a motion that we accept Pike's bid for $208,495,000. And uh, we have a done date, complete date by uh, October 15th. Whether Permitting. Okay, we have a motion. Second. It's going to let them do it. Second. And now we have a second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? I, I'm Sorry, Eric, still. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mark. Go ahead, Duncan. Um, Eric, Eric, you you really feel that Pike is, even though it's almost twenty grand more, is the way we want to go. Uh, it's, well, it's about 14,000 more, I think. But the reason it's one reason it's more is because uh, Wickham figured in the town doing some of the work. And, and it's 400 yards. And, more and also, Pike is estimating 400 more yards. So, well, I understand that. Uh, I mean, are you against the town doing some more work to save us money or? I just, from listening to Jason, it frees up him and his crew if they're not committed to this. They got they can work on their own projects. I, I was still not entirely clear. I, I guess I didn't hear Jason's response to exactly what Whitcomb wanted the town to do for services. So to answer your question, on River Road West, we were going to add uh, six to eight inches of plant mix, and uh, they were going to do the reclamation of it, and then we were going to do the grading and compacting of it. That was what we were going to do. Uh, and the pipe, we don't. We're just bringing the plant mix in. They're going to do the reclamation and they're going to grade it and do the final compacting and stuff that we won't get told. We don't have a compactor anyway, so yes. really we'd, we'd be talking about grading it, right? Yeah, we'd have to rent a compactor or uh, the roller or uh, Wickham's would rent it to us for in the contract or in the, the bid proposals. I think it's a thousand dollars so a week or day. 
So any of those guys are going to, you know, I mean, they're, they're giving a quote based on an estimated number of tons. It's not unusual to get an estimate where one is estimating more tonnage than the other. Yeah. But at the end of the day, the bill is going to be based on the number of tons that they actually lay. So I, I guess what I'm saying is they're both reputable pavers. Um, I, I'm certainly not afraid of, you know, going with Whitcomb at 185,000. It, it's it's uh, 20,000 less than than Pike. 194,000. How much? 194. Oh, 194. I thought it was 184. 194. Okay. Okay, we have a we have an motion. Do we have further discussion? Do we have a guarantee that they're going to lay the amount of pavement they they estimate? We have a guarantee nope. that. No. Uh, they will, in fact, probably not. It will probably not be exactly the same as what they lay. But the so it's useful. Uh, another metric that's useful to know is the per unit pricing. For Whitcomb, it's $130 per ton. And for Pike, it's $115. So so Brian, both of these, both of these folks could come in with drastically less tonnage, just as long as they say they get the job done. I'd be very surprised if it was drastically less tonnage, but they will not. I, I at the same rate, I, I would also you know, virtually guaranteed that they will not come in with the exact amount of time that they estimate. But they're professionals. They try and make an accurate estimate. So it's probably pretty close. They usually all add 10 to 15%. That's what my understanding was when I talked to about when we did the library department on our way back to them and 15%. So a oh, oh, waste. Yeah. Sometimes they don't lay it, so it, it works out. In our favor, and it'll be cheaper. Yep, it's always better to surprise people by spending less money. So, okay, so we have a motion. I want to say, do we have further discussion, Kim? Yes, the questions we had were um, how how much tonnage they estimate, and how much they will know that they'll know how to count it appropriately, so it actually will drain into the storm and not my yeah, well, did you hear Jason earlier? He spoke to the drainage from. Um, we may not have. We were trying really hard to get out the phone, but it was coming in and out. Okay. So, apologies then. So, Jason had conversations very specifically around drainage around your uh, property okay. with well, both. both. <laughs> uh, who was the. Who was. Let's not repeat it. You can connect after. Uh, who was the vendor last time? Do we know? SDR Ireland. SDR Ireland. So neither vendor that we have bids from. Okay. okay. Um, so are we ready to vote? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. No. Uh, We're not really prepared for this one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm going to say aye. No, we do have to do it. A roll call. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, Duncan, how do you vote? No. Mark? No. Evan? Aye. Eric? Aye. <laughs> and I vote aye. So ayes have it. Pike it is. That was very suspenseful. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I know, right? Yeah, I should let you have the vote. Uh, okay, right. next up. I think we're good with Jason. Yeah, Jason. Uh, yeah, so, so uh, Sheriff's Department, there's a blurb about your question on yeah. information updates right here. Page four, if you'd like to check that part out. Um, I'll speak them with science very specifically. Okay. Um, auditing, auditing, then sheriff's department, and then Atlas, and then propane. 
and then the executive session. Okay. So uh, the I think the next one up we have is the economic development. Oh yeah, yeah across grant. that. Yep. So uh, we have the first draft of an RFP that I prepared. Uh, it begins on page eight of your packet. I did not see anything in here specifically referring to the business part. As that would be probably one of the primary roles. Sorry, can you repeat that? Anything that uh, pertains to the business part, small part, small industrial part. So uh, I'm going to add that to the tasks will be assigned by the select board and may include. I'll add that as one of the, the bullet items. Yeah. I'll add that as the first bullet item. Because that's probably one of the most important things we would have them doing. Yep. So I would have a question as to whether or not we need to even give any possible examples, whether or not it's enough to simply say that the tasks and priorities will be set by the select board. I think that that is, I think that that's technically enough. I think it also can help steer applicants if we do list a few, but I'm also, I'm not, because of that, because we have the right and we describe it in here, that the select board is assigning the duties. These are just examples and it's not a complete list. The select board can assign anything it wants to whoever agrees to this. Um, so I don't think we need to have an exhaustive and, list. And there is another catch all there at the end of the bullet yep. section, other services that may be required by the town. Uh, I think that to the Duncan's point though, tasks will be assigned by the select board and may include, I, I understand your point and may, um, well, may include, that's fine actually. I don't, I don't mind beefing that language up. I think it's okay. Okay. Yeah, I guess my, my reason for saying that was some of the things on this list, you know, I, I don't know that these are priorities of the select board because we haven't had the discussion. We right. you know we haven't really had the the uh, discussion as to whether these are the priorities, so I think it might set up an expectation of somebody applying that these these are somehow priorities that have been set by the board and you know these like just made me a little uncomfortable um, since we haven't really talked about any of these any of these bullet points. Yeah, I think your point is a very valid one. I would, I do like the idea of having bullets. I think the bullets should be driven by the priority list that we have come up with because we do have one. So we should probably identify what of those items, like to Eric's point too, like what of those items are the prize priority of the board based on projects that we've discussed to date. And we are, you know, seeking out this person to provide additional ideas around this as well. The only other comment I would make is in the bottom under evaluation criteria, the last sentence in the first paragraph says cost will not be the primary factor for selection. I would like to suggest substituting the word will with may. So in other words, cost may not be the primary factor rather than will not be. I don't think we should have that there at all, actually. Sentence. Yeah. I, I, I'm perfectly fine with striking the entire sentence. I'd like to, I, I'm 100% fine changing it to May, but I would like to keep it just because I think that it helps us if we decide to not go with the low bid uh, on receiving proposals. It gives us a little bit more ammunition as to are allowing the board to have freedom in its decision making process. Um, for evaluation criteria, like, I don't think we should say based on two criteria. Um, I say, I think we should say based on criteria, including, and then we can, we can list out specific things, but we don't have to list out all of our criteria because we don't know what we don't know. Yep. Um, and I would also like to actually see as part of that criteria, 
a portfolio of work? Like what work have you done in the past? Good point. And to Brian's concern, you know, your last paragraph pretty much says that the town of Johnson reserves the right to accept or reject any or all proposals at their sole discretion. Yep. I, I eliminating or changing that sentence isn't the you know be all end all, but I I, I prefer it. I don't want to, I don't want it there personally, but Evan, what do you think? I'd strike it. Yeah, let's strike it. Okay, we have consensus already. Okay. Um, one other question, Brian. Um, did you? Did you reach out to LCPC to see if they have any capacity to provide these services? It, it occurs to me that, you know, if they did, this might not be what they would want to respond to. And it might, you know, it might beg the question of whether or not we even need to go out for an RFP. Uh, I did not have any discussion with LCPC that would, I didn't have any big conversation with LCPC along those lines. Um, you know, if the board doesn't want to go out for bid, you know, we can, we can do that, but I, I've been going along assuming that we were going to go out for bid. The other thing I would like to change to is in the description of the town, the very first paragraph, yep. if you go to the second to the last sentence, it says the town has a total payroll of approximately 500,000 covering 15 employees and part-time equivalent employees. I would like to just say the town has 15 full-time and, and full-time equivalent. Um, I don't think we should talk about the payroll. I don't think that That's affects fine. economic development. I think that was use of the language that we use from auditing. Yeah, okay. So I think that, I think you're right that that's not relevant. Yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna reiterate, I really feel like LCPC should be contacted um, to see if they have capacity. I know that the board, when they were talking, I know myself personally, um, I was talked into the idea of going with contract because it might be a good first year alternative as opposed to having an employee. And I know that in the past, you know, Eric can certainly speak to this. LCPC has provided, um, you know, really good services in terms of, um, you know, administering grants or programs uh, for the community and Myself personally, if they had the capacity to provide services, I might not be as interested in even putting out an RFP. So, just a thought. Uh, if the I, I'll do it if the board would like, but I again I've been assuming that we're going out for bid for it. So, well, that's why I raised the question: is is for the board, not for you, Ryan. Yeah. Um, well, I wasn't thinking we used oh, uh, the planning commission, the Mohawk County Planning Commission, as our economic development. I mean, I think we could use their services certainly, and perhaps that's one of the one of the places we get information back from. Like maybe they would want to respond to our RFP in some way. But I would like for us to, you know, throw the net out widely and not limit ourselves personally. Yeah, I, I think I sort of like the idea of the RFP to see what's out there. But if nothing really materializes, certainly within the budget range that we have for money. I think that's when we would go to LCPC and see what they're able to provide. Um, I think they have more capacity now than they did have. There was a time that uh, they were struggling, but 
and I know you know they they do good work. I think I'd like to see what's out there even. Um, is there any more feedback on the RFP? I'm I'm with um, Beth. I'm with you and Eric in the sense that I think a contract in person is what we need to do, and I think we should put it out there and maybe you know work with LCPC, maybe run the you know the proposal by them get feedback but i think we should go ahead and see see who's out there there's got to be people out there that would could do this part-time yeah, I, I have every intention of inviting lcpc to submit but let's um so if there's no more feedback on the rfp that we have let's Get the cleaned up language, Brian, if you could. Yep. Um, maybe get feedback from LCPC, if you could do that too. Uh, and then we could publish. But I think we should see it one more time before I publish. Kyle, yes, sorry. I just was curious if the board envisions this as being a or in house. I mean, actually, is this person having an office space here? Uh, realistically, uh, we don't have a ton of office space here, but we do have a couple, uh, a couple part-time people using desks part-time. So we probably could host the person in office, uh, at least on occasion. But if we saw a good proposal from somebody who was working remotely, I don't think there'd be anything that would preclude that would automatically preclude somebody from participating. I think they'd have just have a competitive application. I mean, I'm a full-time remote employee, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I think if we could host somebody, I think it would be convenient for us if we were yeah. hosting somebody occasionally rather than a permanent fixture. Mm -hmm. uh, we also don't have that much money for it. No, I don't. Uh -huh. Yeah. It, it, it's hard for me to imagine somebody that lives out of state doing this, but maybe I need a more open mind. They're pretty close minded. <laughs> we're we're going to get a lot of response, but. <laughs> were there any bullet points in particular that you did want me to start? I mean, I would I like to. list the priorities, but if you've got any that you know you don't like. I don't think we should have any of these if they're not in our list of priorities, is my opinion. Okay. Yeah, I would agree too. I agree. All right. Okay. Are you good? Do you have what you need? Yeah, I think so. Okay, let's move on. All right. The auditing contract. Next up is signing the audit contract with RHR Smith and Company. Um, so they have you know, uh, agreed to engage with us and they've submitted two documents along those lines. Which we already agreed to pricing wise. So I motion to authorize the chair to sign the two documents with RHR Smith and Company Auditing Services. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, That's my favorite line. Okay. Eyes have it. I'll sign it. Okay. Next. Oh, that's a good idea. Next up, sheriff's contract. All right. Next up is our renewal of the patrol contract. We already signed communications uh, last meeting, and we're ready. Uh, we have patrol in front of us now. Um, you've received the communications uh, that we had with the sheriff. Um, reiterate the sheriff as 
stands by the recommendations that we've received about how to handle speed limit signs, um, but they also have confirmed that they are not aware of any of losing any cases on uh, over a, a speed limit signs not being spaced the way that the recommendation is. Um, I make a motion to sign the contract with the sheriff with patrol. We have a motion to do a second. I think you should second it, but well, we have lines for everybody. So you're all getting your name on that, baby. We have a second. A second. second. Okay, we have a second. Discussion. No discussion. All those in favor? Signify by saying aye. Aye. Oh, sorry, Scott. Please. So, yeah, I have a few uh, questions. There's a front porch form post from Diane. Diana. Diana. And she had some concerns. I guess she used to be on the committee. And I have not read the contract, so I'm sort of shooting in the dark here. Has anybody read her concerns? Yes. And I shared some of her concerns. We need a new contract. We don't have time to have an updated contract at this point, or we won't have law enforcement services, but. The other questions I have is, we had talked about this uh, a few meetings ago, and there's some concerns on the lopsidedness of warnings versus tickets, the duplication of services on Route 15 while Clay Hill, and actually the steep on Clay Hill is getting Point now where cars are having a hard time staying on the road, they're traveling so fast. Mm -hmm. And there's never anybody doing radar checks on Clay Hill anymore. And I have fired, I'm up there a lot, and there's just nothing going on. Where are the streets the same way? We brought this up, and you know, we're marching forward with contract, and I don't see anything from the North County Sheriff's Department. What their plan is on dealing with the safety issue and speed in this community. Yeah. Yep, go ahead, Kim. And my concern was we actually had a neighbor stop by and talk about things that I didn't know had happened. There was a fire. Um, I guess at Vermont Studio Center, there's a fire in some auto place, and the fire in someone's car all happened in one sitting and um, the person who stopped by said, I have a family, I don't feel safe. And I, I didn't know where, what to tell that person, but mm -hmm. I felt like this should be something, I would think either the, the select board or the sheriff's office is calling people together to say, how can we make Johnson a safer place? And I don't know how that can get worked into the contract or, um, throwing it to the select board that if, if that person doesn't feel safe, there's other people who don't feel safe and how can we support them? Yeah, and I spoke to the same person I think that you're talking about. I'm pretty confident actually, because <laughs> your names are mentioned. Uh, and no, I think safety is a critically important piece. Um, we need to, my view, not the board's view. We need to update the sheriff's contract. So, if I can just, I know I'm out of order and everything, but that happens a lot with me. <laughs> what is your take as our select board getting ready to sign, you know, well over a $500,000 contract with the sheriff's department when all hell is breaking loose with people speeding willy nilly through this community? Mm -hmm. I think my, again, Scott, this is really just my view and I'm certainly not speaking for the whole board. Um, I volunteered to actually have conversations about law enforcement last year uh, for a lot of the same concerns you have. Um, and I actually think we need to have like dedicated effort put toward our contract. And I have talked about the towns we share the contract with and they very much want to do the same. So I think it is just a matter of do we go without having law enforcement and not signing this contract right now, or do we take the time we need to actually build out a contract that is appropriate? Once it's um, signed, is there a, a way to amend, or do you need to wait a whole other year to 
it would be the contract year, but I am pretty also pretty confident that any contract negotiations we have will not be quick. Um, Dean? Is there any way of um, like the select board organizing like a, I don't know, a public forum or something to have the sheriff representative of the sheriff's department come, have uh, public come so that the public can air what they're speaking about, talk about their concerns, talk about what's going on and kind of have one of those, that I know everybody's heard about them and seen them, you know, just kind of that kind of dialogue so that people can feel their feeling heard and they're also telling it directly to them. Contract or not, it, it, you know, it would be nice for the sheriff's department to also get a better understanding of the public that they're serving, you know, how they can, how they can maybe help without changing lines on a contract. There's plenty of ways that they can help, you know, make the public feel better. Yeah, sure. Or how the public can help that. Yeah. 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 So I, I'm, I know from talking with Roger Marku a few times on this, actually, he's happy to have public forums. Um, well, I'll not speak for him. He's been willing in the past <laughs> to have them. Uh, so I'm sure he'd be very open to that. I'm not, I'm sure he'd be open to that. Yeah, sorry, I lost the folks on the lost Wi-Fi. So I can't see Doug and Mark anymore. So uh, Doug, sorry. <laughs> Duncan, can, and can you hear me? We can hear you. It's just my internet. So sorry, I was trying to get you back. It didn't work. Um, but anyway, my I guess my bottom the bottom line is I think we as a board agree we need a new contract and we'll uh, it'll be something that you'll hear, hear more about very soon. And yes, to your point about bringing the sheriff's department in for conversation, I think it's a, an important part of all of that. Yeah. In the meantime, we have a motion. We have a second. Uh, are we ready to vote? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it. Uh, Copy the sign. Sign a copy there, or I can just go ahead and clean one if you like. Here, and we'll just use my copy. I need a pen, though. Thank yeah, you for coming. Thank you for all your service. And Mark and Duncan, wherever you are. <laughs> thank you so much. The Atlas contract for wastewater testing management is really about administering that, right? It's state yeah. money. Um, uh, we pay. Do you remember how much we pay? Fifty percent. Fifty percent. Is that split with the village, or is it just? Well, that it's is the one thing that I want property. to clear up. It has been split with the village in the past. This contract only has the town signature. Where, uh, where are they doing the delegated treatment? It's on the telephone property that's right there. Not just the whole park. It looks to me, and the testing wells that I know that they use are on the uh, garage side of Lenway Lane. So up in between Lenway Lane and the rail trail. Um, so, with the village. so the village will split half of it. Yeah. Um, half of a half, which is a quarter, quarter. in some towns. <laughs> So I motion uh, to allow the administrator to administer the Atlas contract for water testing management services. We have a motion to do a second? Second. Um, do we have discussion? Yeah, we'll, uh, that's actually one change I'd like to make the previous contracts been signed by myself and uh, the village manager. So, so that would be Rosemary. No, it, <laughs> <laughs> it never gets old. <laughs> uh, so I'd like to go back to site uh, to Atlas, uh, changing the contract to 
include the village in the contract. I, complete, I completely agree with Brian and a copy of the contract should be made available to the village trustees for their approval too. Yeah. And I would uh, consider a friendly amendment if you were gonna change that requirement in your motion. It's ultra friendly right now. Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second. Down the love here. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. Propane. Propane bed. So we have a very rough first draft of um, propane fit. There are a couple things that we need to do before this is going to be fully ready for prime time. Um, namely, how much fuel do we use and what is the delivery site for each type of fuel? Um, and then the other thing that we need to do is we currently split everything, all the fuel we get, uh, we split with the village. Uh, so we do need to involve the village in this discussion. And the evaluation criteria could probably go. Yeah, if you look at the, uh, if you look at that, Brian, uh, you still have information about the economic development coordinator. Probably. Okay, so this is, a, this is a very rough. Sorry. So being that we do share all fuel at the town garage with the village, or at the town mill property and here, we would need to discuss with them if they want to go out for bed. I think it would be smart. Well, we could go out for bed for an open house and the library the library and the town garage without them we could it just wouldn't make much but sense if we're only doing three properties you're right because if we go for a bigger boat you get a better rate typically i agree seems like seems like the the larger the quantity the better the price Okay, so we should schedule a joint meeting. We'll have this as a topic. Can this be uh, the locations and type fuels and rough quantities be added by the time we do a joint meeting? I expect so. I don't think it's going to be difficult. I think Rosemary has all the, the data. I just had not had a chance to meet with her to yeah. pull invoices and, and and get it. Uh, do we want to wait for a joint meeting or do we want to just get this roughed out a little bit better and send it? Well, rather than meeting. talking about Rosemary, let's talk to her. And hey, Rosemary, can we get a report by vendor or our field vendors? Maybe like. That's okay. Oh, we have dollar amounts that I can get with our vendor and they should be able to give me. Well, we don't have not the dollar. rate is probably different. The rate will be different, yeah. Can we just get a manifest in Excel? That's what we <laughs> Maybe. Because <laughs> then I can because then I can take the, the line description and create a pivot table from it. We only have for also in check for this building. Yep. And then we can split the two from village easy enough to to see what their totals year over year. But yeah, that would be good to see like a three year. Because we're also saying you can do bills for each separate building. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that would be nice. That would be good to have. Cool. Well, that doesn't get back to my question. Do we want to just get more information and do it at a joint meeting, or do we want to rough it out better and send it to the trustees for them to talk about it wrong. Or the more we can get done prior to any joint meeting, the better. Fair enough. I'm comfortable with that. What about you two on the radio there? I I agree with you 100 percent Evan. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. Thank you plan. For that started rolling. Yes, thanks, Brian. No problem. 
and send all numbers to Beth and she'll do her magic. So. I love pivot tables. What's up next, Brian? Uh, executive session. Yes, yes, yes. For our, uh, Can we have the language that's required to keep in your report or the agenda? Because I, I can never remember, you know, so it's in the it, needs a, page, I think. it needs a little bit of tweaking, uh, but if you go into the kind of narrative. Oh, in, in your report? Page, it's it's like, oh, page okay. three. Okay. Yeah. You, what you want to move okay. is you want to move the second sentence. Yeah. And then if that passes, move the third sentence. Okay. I'm also not afraid to pre-disclosure. The town's attorney communications regarding regarding litigation, which the town may be a party of, may put this town at a substantial disadvantage. Yeah. Second. Okay. Motion a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Ayes well, that have being it. In the case, a motion that we enter into executive session for attorney client privilege. Communications as allowed by one BSA 313 A1. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.